All right, this is uh, just a brief Reader's Digest type review of uh, the uh, hour and a half long uh, DVD I've just produced on creating a full size horse from scratch as well as a uh, oh, rider uh, for the horse. We made the head turn a little bit on the horse. Well, that's fine, but it doesn't give you the good proportions because that actually. Just little vignettes of. Uh, Exactly how to create a horse from scratch, That's a little sharp as well as uh, you know creating the anatomy. And I just show you how to lay it out and make it look like a horse, and the different procedures you can use to uh, achieve that. So here we go, just a brief review. I show myself making my uh, a three-day appearance at a gift shop and uh, starting to put the clay on that same armature. Putting it on in uh, huge clumps at first uh, just to get it covered. And now I'm uh, starting to produce the uh, thorax of the horse. showman in me, I guess. Uh, kind of funny being surrounded by clothes, though. Here I am and just blocking in the uh, shoulder blade. It's very uh, important to have that part because it's uh, it actually uh, the horse's head uh, showing the muscle and the bone. Your reference is very, so very. The muscles there are similar to the muscles in your lower leg. Go through my uh, reference material and on the web and everything else. Try to find horses running and uh, their legs basically in the same position that uh, I'm sculpting, and that way I can actually see what muscles are coming into play. I start out with just a block of clay just to establish the uh, upper part of the body of the human. Um, if the horse was raising his head, his uh, top of his I've got head. this photograph to go by. This guy's coming down the hill. Uh, he's actually, he almost went up over the bluff, uh, right where the tourists are up on the, the little bighorn. And uh, he turned around. He's riding bareback. He has no blanket or anything on his horse and I'm, I'm noticing where his knees are and his knees are high up here against the shoulder of the horse his legs are tucked back and hard onto the uh, rib cage of the horse to hold his uh, position so even these need to be brought up just a little bit more on here doesn't uh, it wasn't the uh, final head I redid the head later on in this in this video uh, on a uh, jig that I set up separate from uh, um, I asked him also <clears throat> I had a, a a picture pop in my head while I was working on this yesterday of adding a wolf skin headdress uh, on him and that's something that could be flowing in behind him and stuff like that a wolf skin would be about so maybe five feet long okay here I'm just adding uh, more detail into the back which eventually will be covered up by <laughs> the headdress that I have for the, uh, the uh, warrior. So as you can see, I'm uh, recreating the uh, skull again. There we go. From scratch. Uh, I found the uh, head was too big that I had done originally, and so I was doing it more scale. And as you see in the video, I scaled it uh, through a unique way of uh, doing so. Again, I'm using uh, the thin clay as skin over what I've laid down, and uh, it makes it uh, looks it makes it look a little more real than if you tried to uh, 
put the muscle on and just try to smooth it out. I cut this head down about a third because it is a little bit big. And I'm going to be using uh, pictures I printed up of. Uh, Again, I start with a profile of the face, or the head, uh, to establish the uh, shape in the uh, not Native American, which I'm doing. Uh, they have higher cheekbones and a little broader cheekbones as well. What I'm showing you is, is a Western sculpture, but uh, here I'm putting the tongue in it. Uh, but you know, whatever you do, uh, whatever art form, whatever subject you do, it, all everything I'm doing here uh, comes into the same play. Pretty set, self-explanatory what I'm doing there. I'm, I got the eyeball in, but now I'm putting the uh, fatty tissue above the eye. The uh, character of the face is really starting to come through now. I uh, braided, braided my daughter's hair a lot, so I knew something about braiding hair. It would be just the skin of the wolf head on his head. Uh, unlike modern day portrayals of Indians wearing uh, animal headdresses, uh, there wouldn't be a uh, form inside the skin to give it the exact shape of a wolf. Of course, I've reattached the, the head now. And uh, just starting to uh, get the uh, muscles redone because of the repositioning of uh, their arms. I decided to get the uh, body as close to being done before I put the wolf skin on. I have a candle next to the uh, sculpture here, and I'm just putting the uh, metal tool into the candle to uh, heat it up and that uh, allows it to go through the uh, clay a little bit softer, a little easier without uh, a lot of distortion. There's quite a bit of fur inside the ear and that's what I'm trying to do. Let's show that. I'm going to do the eyes. You still get detail on it but just try to keep it at bare minimum and yet make it look like it isn't at bare minimum. That's the beauty of sculpting. All right, I think that's going to be about it uh, for now. Um, I just wanted to get it ready to go to the foundry tomorrow and uh, let them see what it's going to look like. All right, down the ridge line so is done. Finally. All right, I've delivered the clay to the mold room. This is Con. He's the guy that makes the molds. He's got a separate business here. Pretty cool. Anyway, there's my clay. I've dropped it off. Now, it's not the only clay he's got in here. He's got several other pieces that look like they're getting ready to be molded. Well, this is what bronze looks like before you put acid and chemicals on it. This is down the ridge line. Uh, I finished it uh, several months ago. Um, and it's, this is the first copy. And it's, be go it's this one's going to go to Italy, actually. And... Uh, Here is the uh, bronze uh, completely uh, colored. I uh, haven't put the final finishing touches on it like the uh, wax and all that stuff. Some of the colors will dull down, some will brighten up. But uh, I just wanted you to see how it turned out. It turned out beautiful. Um, it's all getting ready to be photographed and shipped. You go to this website, uh, A Day in the Life of a Lemon, blogspot.com, and you'll notice that I have two columns, and then I have a right-hand column. And in that right-hand column, on the top, is where you purchase my DVDs.
just below that is a translate my blog into your language uh, area and you can just click on that little white box below and pick the language you want to speak in and it'll translate everything on the page to your language now you just click on that and all my DVDs drop down the uh, new one is right at the top and then you just uh, click on the uh, buy now button after you've picked out what you want and you can buy them all or one uh, this is the other blog spot that I have, uh, Bronzes by David Lemon. This is my online uh, gallery that I have that shows uh, all my work. Uh, here are just some of the new clays that I've got on there. I have a story behind them and, and as well as the price of each bronze. Now, uh, this is, again, on the upper right-hand column is the uh, purchase area as well as the uh, translate your language area. So those are two websites you can go to to purchase my new DVD and any other. Now this is what you get. You get uh, the uh, DVD itself in a case. Uh, you get a certificate of authenticity as well as a slip that tells you uh, thank you for your purchase as well as telling you something about the certificate uh, which I uh, use an embosser on as well as uh, uh, what you can play the DVD on. Uh, if you look real hard, you can see the embossed uh, part of my certificate is right above my signature or on my signature. Uh, I've been using that embosser since 1977 when I first started uh, going professional with my sculpting. And uh, that's what you get in the uh, thing. Uh, down below this slip, you uh, also get links to where you can purchase uh, clay and tools and all that other stuff. Now inside the, the uh, case, which I'm going to attempt to open single-handedly, you get a DVD. And it runs one hour and 28 minutes. So I hope you'll be interested enough to uh, purchase that. I think it's got some good information on how to sculpt a horse and rider.